Okay, greetings everyone. So we're gonna start getting into the next level beyond just the series that we've been dealing with so far. You know, the series we've been dealing with so far are, are just a sum of a pattern of numbers, sum of a sequence of numbers. And I mean, we're still gonna have that as the foundation for what we're doing, but we're gonna be taking this to the next level in this section. But I'm gonna start by uh, asking a question. Have you ever tried to divide one by the quantity one minus X? I mean, come on, we're all math nerds here, so perhaps I'm not the only one who's ever thought about this before or ever tried this. What essentially I'm asking you to do or think about is, have you ever taken one and divided it by one minus X? Ever tried to figure out how we can rewrite this fraction in a useful way? You may want to pause the video and go play around with it a little bit. What I'm going to do is walk you through this, and we're going to do this using the division algorithm long division for polynomials in a little different way than normal. But nonetheless, you'll see something come out of this. Um, I know many of you learned generic rectangles for dividing polynomials, and, and you could try it that way. Now's a good time to pause the video and see what you can come up with if you want. But um, I'm not a, uh, a big fan of the generic rectangle way because it wasn't my training, if you will. So I'm going to do it with the division algorithm. So the division algorithm starts with asking what um, this term here, 1, how many times does it go into the 1 that we have here? Well, obviously, that's just 1. And then we're going to take that 1 and multiply it by 1 minus x. So then I multiply and write it down below, and then we subtract. And 1 minus 1, of course, is 0. That's what we would expect. And I get nothing here to subtract from the x. Looks like a 10 now, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, so 0 minus negative x just becomes x. Then we're going to continue this process. I'm going to ask again, how many times does 1 go into x? Or in other words, what do I multiply 1 by to get x? That's just going to be x. So if I multiply x times 1, I get x minus x times x is x squared. And then i got to subtract that quantity. X minus X again cancels like we would expect. Nothing minus negative X squared becomes just X squared. Now how many times does 1 go into X squared? That's X squared times. So we're going to write that plus X squared up here. And then multiply it. I'm going to end up with X squared minus X cubed. And then i got to subtract that quantity. And I'm going to be left with just x cubed, and maybe we're starting to see a pattern develop here. Oops. I don't know what that's for. I don't know what I just did. This is not uh, something I'm familiar with. New software, ladies and gentlemen, but I'll get used to it. Well, obviously, I'm going to be multiplying by x cubed, and I got a pattern forming here. This is going to be x cubed minus x to the fourth. And then I'm going to be left with x to the fourth down here. And this pattern is just going to continue. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if we can write this out. So I'm claiming that 1 over 1 minus x is exactly the same as 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. And just by extension here, plus dot, 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 plus x to the power of n, plus dot, dot, dot. And that's going to keep going. Now, you should be skeptical, okay? Does this make sense? Well, I mean, not always. Clearly, x can't be equal to 1. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You know, I get division by 0 on the left-hand side, and then I get you know, a bunch of ones added together on the other side over here, clearly something's going wrong with that. Um, well, let's explore a little bit more. Well, what if x equals zero? Does that work? Well, on the left-hand side, I get one, and on the right-hand side, every term after the first term goes to one, so that one worked. And what if x equals two? Well, then on the left-hand side, I get 1 over 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. And then on the left-hand side, 
that's clearly not going to be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 and so forth on down the line. So it doesn't work when x equals 2. So what's going on here? I'm pausing for a moment because I'm hoping maybe somebody watching gets a chance to recognize what we see here. You've seen this before. What is this? Well, I'm pausing, getting people a chance to think. Notice what's happening from term to term here. If I go from this to this, I multiply by x. And if I go from this to this, I multiply by x. If I go from this to this, we're multiplying by x. This is geometric. And if this is geometric, we know when a geometric series converges. This will converge. Excuse the writing here. When the magnitude of the common ratio, the magnitude of x, is less than 1. And I really don't like the way I wrote the word converge here. So let me, let me clean that up a little bit better. And this will diverge when the magnitude of x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, what does it converge to? Well, remember, a geometric series converges to the sum, which is the first term. Well, what, what's the first term? Excuse that there. The first term is 1. And then we divide by 1 minus the common ratio. But the common ratio is x. Oh, my gosh. We're right back where we started. Do you think that's accidental? It's absolutely not accidental. That's the way it came out. That's the way it's supposed to come out. Hopefully that was a little bit of a surprise to you. We ended up right back to where we started. We started with wondering what about this 1 over 1 minus x. We did some long division. We noticed that the pattern that we got from the long division was a geometric series. We know when geometric series converged. We saw that it converges when uh, the magnitude of x is less than 1, and it converges to the same fraction that we started with. So this is... This